America's next stealth fighter is going to be expensive. Expensive, with some estimates now reaching as high as $300 million per jet. But while that figure is sure to give plenty of us a serious case of sticker shock, the truth is, even at that high a price, this fighter may still be a bargain. Let's talk about the next generation air dominance fighter and how much it costs to own the sky. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is air power. There is no denying that Uncle Sam has a thing for expensive military platforms. I mean, today's F-35 Lightning II effort currently holds the title for most expensive military program in history with an estimated 1.7 trillion dollar cost over the jet's service life. And with the F-35A's per unit price now floating at around $80 million a piece, forking over $300 million for a new stealth fighter does sound a bit shocking. But it's really important to remember that the F-35's price has come down dramatically thanks to the fact that there are now a whopping 17 nations placing orders for these advanced fighters. And there have been more than 1,000 F-35s already delivered to customers around the world. In other words, despite a really high operating cost, the F-35 has become one of the most widely operated fighters on the planet, and high volume has a way of bringing costs down. But on the other side of that coin, the Air Force intends to purchase just 200 or so fighters from the Next Generation Air Dominance Program, with these Next Generation jets expected to fly alongside another 300 advanced new Block 4 F-35s and at least 1,000 artificial intelligence-enabled drone wingmen. This relatively short production run will place the NGAD fighter on pretty equal footing in terms of total numbers with the very fighter it's expected to replace, the F-22 Raptor. And the truth is, when you compare the NGAD's projected costs to fighters like the Raptor or even the venerable F-14 Tomcat, that sticker shock soon gives way to a sense that NGAD may actually be a pretty good deal, even at $300 million per airframe. Now, I know that sounds nuts, but I promise I'll explain. But first, let's talk about what we know about the NGAD fighter and what it's expected to cost so far. Now, we've talked about the NGAD program on this channel a bunch of times now, so I'm going to try not to go over too many things that we've already covered and focus on some elements of this developmental effort that we haven't had a chance to discuss yet. The Next Generation Air Dominance, or NGAD program for short, started back in 2015 within the secretive confines of the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, better known as DARPA. And this may surprise you, but the program was not originally aimed at fielding an operational fighter. Instead, this DARPA-led effort was all about advancing technologies in four very specific categories. Those categories were propulsion, uncrewed systems, materials, and sensors. Now, according to the Congressional Research Service, DARPA and the DoD itself spent about $4.2 billion on the NGAD development program between 2015 and 2022. But that's a bit misleading. Because also in 2022, the Air Force awarded nearly $5 billion in contracts for their NGAP program, which stood for Next Generation Adaptive Propulsion Program. This is the effort to field next generation adaptive cycle engines for this new NGAD fighter, which means that by the end of 2022, we were already really looking at about $10 billion invested into developing the technologies for this new fighter. Now, we've discussed this in the past, but it's worth noting that of that nearly $5 billion doled out for next generation adaptive cycle engines, only about... 2 billion went to America's leading turbofan engine manufacturers, General Electric and Pratt & Whitney, 
both of which have been hard at work on their new adaptive cycle engines for the next generation air dominance program known as the XA100 and XA101 respectively. The other $3 billion all went to Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman, which suggests this money may have been going towards incorporating these advanced adaptive cycle engine designs into their respective next generation air dominance fighter designs. So that covers propulsion. What about technology category number two? Uncrewed systems. The NGAD fighter will fly alongside a constellation of AI-enabled drone wingmen, which will help extend sensor reach and increase combat capacity and will likely increase survivability as well. Now, we don't know a ton about the drones that will fly alongside this new fighter, in big part because they haven't been selected yet. But we do know that they're likely to be pricey as well. Now, there's been lots of discussion about what drones will ultimately be flying alongside this new NGAD fighter, and the Air Force has certainly been exploring its options. It seems very likely that eventually this manned-unmanned teaming system will incorporate a wide variety of different types of drones, ranging in price and capability. For instance, the Air Force has definitely been exploring the use of the Kratos XQ-58A Valkyrie, which is a high subsonic, low observable UCAV that is very cost effective. Depending on trim, these drones can ring in as cheap as a Tomahawk cruise missile, despite being a fully reusable aircraft. Now, they can only carry payloads of around 600 pounds, which would allow them to each carry two small diameter bombs or potentially some electronic warfare or intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance packages. And while these aircraft don't offer a ton of payload, they can make up for that in volume thanks to their low cost and the fact that you can launch them from stationary rocket launchers if you don't have a runway available. But then there are also other far more expensive and capable options out there, like the MQ-28 Ghost Bat. Boeing may no longer be a part of the Air Force's Skyborg program, but they've made no secret about believing their Australian-led Loyal Wingman programs, MQ-28 Ghost Bat, may be a good fit for the Air Force's drone future. Now, we honestly don't know a ton about what the Ghost Bat is capable of. We know it stretches about 9 feet longer than the Valkyrie at 38 feet, that it's expected to offer a range of about 2,300 miles, and that Boeing claims it can offer, quote, fighter-like performance, as well as the payload capacity to carry advanced avionics on board, like its own AESA radar that could be invaluable for future air-to-air -air and air-to-ground operations. We also don't know what the Ghost Bat is likely to cost, but we do know that Australia paid about 454 million Australian last May to purchase an additional seven MQ-28s, which shakes out to around $44 million US per drone. But of course, these costs could certainly drop significantly in high volume production. And that's interesting because past statements from Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall have suggested that the Air Force expects that the drones that will fly alongside this new NGAD fighter may each cost as much as half as the NGAD fighter itself, which at a $300 million price point would mean $150 million per drone. But I think what's very likely to happen is that we'll eventually see a variety of different drones with different capability sets and price points being fielded alongside these advanced new fighters. Now, some of these drones will be designed to fly alongside new fighters for the duration of their lifespan, potentially, offering fighter-like capabilities at fighter-like costs. While cheaper platforms like the XQ-58 Valkyrie will offer reduced capability, but at practically throwaway costs, and then even cheaper systems like the ADM-160 Mauled or miniature air-launched decoy will continue to mature to the point where they're practically drones themselves. And all of these systems at varying levels of cost and capability will coalesce into a massive American air power apparatus with sufficient volume to blot out the sun like a wave of Persian arrows over Thermopylae. 
But everything about this concept pivots on that NGAD fighter, the manned or crewed fighter at the center of this drone constellation, giving commands and making kill decisions for a whole bevy of uncrewed systems at their disposal. And as you might imagine, being that important has a way of making a program expensive. But now let's move on to technology category number three, which is materials. Advances in material science are often among the most secretive elements of a stealth aircraft's design. And today's radar absorbent materials are rated to absorb as much as 80% of inbound electromagnetic energy that make up radar waves. But they also limit fighter performance due to their fragility. Improved RAM could reduce maintenance costs, improve stealth, and allow for greater performance. And every indicator is that this NGAD fighter, as well as the B-21 Raider program, has placed a massive emphasis on developing material science that has largely remained behind the veil of classification. Today's polymer-based RAM starts to break down at temperatures of just about 480 degrees Fahrenheit, or around 250 degrees Celsius, and that's a huge problem for high-performance fighters that fly at supersonic speeds and perform aerobatic maneuvers, because all of the friction and pressure of the air pushing against the leading edges of the wings and portions of the tail surface all create temperatures that can exceed this limit. As a result, RAM has to be frequently repaired or replaced, and that accounts for a huge part of the cost of operating stealth aircraft. But recent years have seen promising breakthroughs in things like ceramic-based radar absorbent materials, made by folks like a team out of North Carolina State University, led by Cheryl Zhu. According to their findings published in 2020, their ceramic-based RAM could absorb upwards of 90% of inbound radar waves while also withstanding temperatures in excess of 3,200 degrees, which would be enough to sustain not just supersonic flight, but hypersonic flight as well. And in 2021, the same Cheryl Zhu and her team announced that they had successfully created a spray-on carbon fiber reinforced polymer-based radar absorbent coating that could offer similar performance. And it probably won't come as much of a surprise to you, but in May of 2021, the Air Force's Office of Scientific Research announced that they were now funding Cheryl Zhu's work. And finally, we have the fourth technology category, which is sensors. The NGAD program leans even further into the F-35's air combat methodology of detecting and targeting enemy aircraft from greater ranges than ever before, allowing this fighter to engage with and destroy enemy jets without them ever even knowing it was in the neighborhood. Now, these systems are all but certain to build off of advancements being made right now with the F-35's Tech Refresh 3 and forthcoming Block 4 upgrades, which include a next-generation distributed aperture system, which is expected to offer a big leap in infrared search and track capabilities, over today's top-of-the-line systems. Now, this will give the Block 4 F-35, as well as almost certainly the NGAD, the ability to identify and even target stealth aircraft at ranges well in excess of today's IRST systems, which tend to top out at around 30 miles. And while the F-35 is currently flying with the most powerful radar ever affixed to a tactical aircraft, it's also getting a huge upgrade in what's being called the AN-APG-85 Active Electronically Scanned Array Radar. Now, the going rumor is that this new radar being developed by Northrop Grumman will leverage gallium nitride transmit and receiver modules. Now, gallium nitride is a semiconductor material that's got a high breakdown voltage and high electron mobility, which among a number of benefits allows for much higher power output in a much smaller package. And all this is to say that this new radar will allow the Block 4 F-35, as well as almost certainly the NGAD that follows, to spot smaller targets than ever before at greater ranges than ever before, even allowing for engaging stealth aircraft under the right circumstances. 
Now, since 2015, a lot of the NGAD effort has been siloed into these technology categories. But as these systems matured, the focus of this NGAD program transitioned towards combining these technologies into a single new airframe. Culminating in a classified contract solicitation, the Air Force released just last month for final design proposals. The Air Force now intends to choose a winning design next year, with aggressive plans to begin fielding operational jets by the end of this decade. So now that we know about all the new technologies and system responsibilities, the Air Force is cramming under the radar absorbent skin of this single new fighter, well, a pretty high cost of entry starts to make a bit more sense. Which is certainly why Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall has already warned the American people that these new fighters will cost in the quote, hundreds of millions of dollars. And some estimates now place them at around 300 million per airframe. But if that number still seems like a shock to you, let me shock you a bit more. Because that $300 million figure is based in 2023 dollars. And if we look back in time at some of America's previous top-tier fighters, you might be shocked at how much they cost in 2023 dollars as well. Let's start with the F-35 because we've already discussed how affordable it's become. But back when the F-35 began its production run in 2007, it was a lot more expensive. Right about $221.1 million per airframe in its first production lot. Now, when adjusted to 2023's inflation, that comes out to about $331.5 million per fighter. Of course, it is important to note that the F-35's per unit cost dropped dramatically in its first years of production, with Lot 2 that came later that same year already cutting it down to $161.7 million per jet, which shakes out to around $242.3 million today. But what about just restarting F-22 production instead of developing an entirely new stealth fighter? After all, the F-22 may be the oldest stealth fighter in service today, but it is still widely considered to be the most dominant air superiority fighter ever to fly, and that is the job NGAD is being designed to fill. Well, the Air Force thought of that. Back in 2017, the branch commissioned a secret study into just how much restarting F-22 production would cost, and the report's conclusions were bad news for Raptor fans like me. Because much of the F-22's production line was cannibalized for F-35 production after the Raptor was canceled, restarting that production line would mean establishing new production infrastructure practically from scratch. Now, as a result, with all the startup costs included, they determined that a batch of 194 new F-22s would cost about $50.3 billion, which, adjusted to today's inflation, skyrockets up to about $62.5 billion. And that means that the average per unit cost of new build F-22 Raptors today would be about $330 million. And while the Raptor is undoubtedly an incredible performer, this is still a jet that started flying 10 years before the first iPhone was released. A lot of the Raptor's design was finalized in the early 1990s. In other words, it would cost about the same to build new old Raptors as it would to build entirely new 21st century design. In fact, even before F-22 production was halted back in 2010, the Congressional Research Service reported that the U.S. was paying about $186 million per aircraft if you don't roll R&D costs into the per unit price, just as we aren't with NGAD. If you did include R&D in the Raptor, it would have ballooned up to $369.5 million per fighter in 2010 dollars. But even still, that 2010 price point of $186 million adjusts to about $260.4 million today. 
And that means that even if we could magically pick up F-22 production where we left off, new Raptors would still probably be creeping up on that $300 million per airframe mark, with a good chunk of the difference being eaten up by having to go back and make changes to the design by adding things like infrared search and track capabilities or helmet cued targeting, systems that were omitted from the original Raptor as a cost-saving measure, but are now seen as all but essential today. What about the world's first stealth aircraft, Lockheed's game-changing F-117 Nighthawk? Now, nailing down the exact per-unit price of the F-117 is a bit tough, in no small part because it was developed, tested, produced, and operated entirely in secret until it was unveiled in 1988. And once the Air Force did release a per-unit price in 1990, they called it $42.6 million, or about $101.4 million today, the Government Accountability Office immediately called them out, saying it was actually more like $100 million per airframe, or about $238 million today. These days, you'll find most outlets citing figures reported about eight years later, when the Air Force called it about $122 million per airframe, or about $230 million in today's currency. Now, $230 million is still a bargain compared to maybe $300 million for an NGAD fighter, but it's important to note that the F-117 was a fighter in prefix alone. We're really talking about a subsonic attack aircraft with no onboard radar, engines pulled out of the F-A-18 Hornet, and avionics that were mostly yanked out of the F-16 and even the B-52. This was not a multi-role fighter, this was a very sneaky attack plane that could deliver just two 2,000-pound bombs and not much else. But we all know that stealth is expensive. What about a non-stealth performer like the fan-favorite F-14 Tomcat? In 1973, the U.S. was purchasing Maverick's ride for just $38 million apiece. Now, compared to the numbers we've been throwing around so far, that sounds like a bargain, but inflation can be tricky like that. And a lot of people tend to forget that while the U.S. may be spending more in terms of a top-line dollar figure on defense than ever, in terms of percent of the nation's gross domestic product, or GDP, America was largely investing twice and sometimes even more than three times as much into defense throughout the Cold War. In 1973, when those F-14 prices were from, the U.S. invested 5.89% of its GDP into defense. Now, these days, U.S. defense budgets tend to float around 3 to 3.5% 3 of GDP, but if we were to match that 1973 posture that these F-14 prices come from, America's 2022 defense budget would jump from $839 million up to about $1.5 trillion. And now that you know that, it'll probably be no surprise that when you adjust that F-14A's price tag of $38 million to 2023 inflation, it comes out to an astonishing $270 million per Tomcat. That's right, we paid about the same for Maverick's ride and its day as we did for the F-22 Raptor. And now that we know all the new technology that's going into this new NGAD fighter, all the new capabilities it's bringing to bear, and we're aware of the fact that the F-14 cost $270 million apiece, the F-117 cost $230 million, the F-35 started at $330 million, and new F-22s would cost $330 million as well, well, an estimated $300 million per NGAD doesn't sound that unreasonable. Now, of course, the Air Force has its work cut out for it, managing these contracts so as not to produce another acquisition boondoggle, the likes of which we saw with the F-35. But at the end of the day, a great deal of America's warfare doctrine is built upon the premise of owning the skies. And that is some very expensive real estate. And just as with any real estate prices, inflation can be a real killer. And on that ends yet another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon 
so you never miss a drop. From Sandbox News.